Well, good evening. Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Say what you will about cable news. It's not a subtle medium. You don't need to do a lot of guessing about what the anchors think. They tend to tell you over and over and over again. So what's on their mind over at MSNBC and CNN? Well, let's see. During yesterday's marathon Michael Cohen Stormy Daniels coverage, talking heads on those channels used a single word 222 times. The word impeachment. Impeachment territory. Impeachment. Ultimately, potentially an impeachment. 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 A giant step toward impeachment. Impeachment. Immediately impeachment. 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 And there's certainly enough to impeach the president right now. Impeachment for the high crime of being shaken down in an extortion scheme by a porn star girlfriend. At least it was his own money, by the way. When members of Congress make payoffs to avoid sex scandals, and they do, it's usually a taxpayer expense. But whatever, the left is now strongly opposed to paying off former sex partners. Though don't tell Bill Clinton that. They're opposed to anything Trump is for, and they're for anything he's against. That's the formula. Sometimes it works out for them. Sometimes it doesn't. Often it's embarrassing. For example, MS-13, one of the deadliest criminal gangs in the world, never popular, and yet once Trump criticized that group, Nancy Pelosi came out of nowhere in support of MS-13, on theological grounds, of course. Having sex on camera for money was, well, since time began, considered disreputable. And then Stormy Daniels attacked the president at a press conference, and now that she's a member of the resistance, porn is noble. Just last night, the left, which says it strongly opposes bigotry, they're always telling you that, defended racially motivated property seizure because the president said he opposed it in a tweet. We'll have more on that in a minute. You see what's going on here. It's Pavlovian, and it raises an interesting question. If the left exists only to oppose anything that Trump does or says, then isn't Trump in control of the left's message? And if that's true, how long before the president takes a hard stand against, I don't know, human trafficking or for motherhood, just to see how the Washington Post responds? It could be highly amusing. Mark Stein is an author and columnist. He joins us tonight. So, Mark, why is Trump not completely in control of Brett Stevens' brain or the entire primetime lineup at CNN? It seems like he is. I actually think he is. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a story, uh, a rather grisly story out of Florida about uh, cockroaches who call into your ear and lay eggs in your brain. <laughs> and actually, uh, and actually uh, don't laugh, Tucker, because it's happening uh, to uh, famous media personalities every morning. They wake up and they find that Trump has laid eggs in their brain and these little Trump roaches are running around inside their heads driving with the nuts. The MS-13 one uh, was a classic thing. These are guys who use machetes on people and chop, uh, chop them up in very brutal ways. Uh, and he called them animals. And immediately uh, everyone said, oh, you can't, you can't compare MS. It's outrageous to dehumanize these people. And then uh, it's taken to the next level and they uh, start presenting them as actually nice young lads in the neighborhood uh, who ride around on bicycles and have part-time jobs after schools. <laughs> uh, they're straight out of Leave it to Beaver, except for the tattoos and machetes. And, uh, and, and Trump manages to do that every time. Uh, as you said, it's, it doesn't even have to be anything big. It can be a f tweet about Aretha Franklin, and they go bananas. Well, last night, I mean, let me just say, I know a number of South Africans, some of them very liberal for whatever it's mm. worth. I've never met mm. one who will defend the government in South Africa. It's corrupt. It's, it's yeah. clearly racially motivated right. in the way that it acts. Trump tweets a question about the behavior of the South African government last night, and all of a sudden he's a bigot for questioning it. And the left finds itself on the same side as Ramaphosa. Like, do they really want to be there, do you think? No, and actually it's ridiculous the way they try to object to what he's saying. Uh, you know, some of the people who didn't like either your report or uh, the president's tweet were saying, oh, well, you know, farm killings are at a 19-year low in South Africa. The fact that farm killings is a category in South African crime statistics tells you what's going on. And just for the record, even as they're tweeting this rubbish, just last night, a 70-year-old woman was beaten to death well, on a course. South African farm. And they lie about uh, those stats. I mean, the idea that right. we take the stats, the politically charged statistics released by the South African government at face value, oh, well, I'm fact-checking with their statistics. Like, what are right. you, a moron? I mean, right. that's, 
No credible social scientist would take that at face value, obviously. No, no. And, and actually, you should always listen very carefully, Tucker, when someone's telling you to shut up. Because that's well, what do. the left is doing. Uh, and uh, Anne Coulter was on your show a couple of nights back. Anne gets a bit twitchy because the president isn't doing more as she sees it. But in fact, actually, by talking about these things, by actually saying uh, it's necessary to expand the conversation and not let yourself be shriveled into the tiny little corner of uh, things that the left will permit you to talk about, uh, that's actually quite important. Uh, MSNBC and CNN just think we should, uh, they talk about celebrating diversity, but in fact they want to enforce homogeneity. We're only exactly. allowed to talk about the same things and only allowed to have the same uh, perspectives on the, on the same things too. And, and God bless the president uh, for occasionally wanting to talk about something MSNBC doesn't want to talk exactly. about. Exactly. Shut up and obey. That is their program. Mm. Mark, thank you for that. Insightful as always.